Training module 2.4, import of climatic data. The importing of climatic data consists in preparing a text file with climatic data, subsequently in importing that climatic data in Aquacrops database, and finally in creating a climate file. Here we see a spreadsheet with climatic data. It contains a number of climatic parameters which are in the columns for a number of data records, which are the rows. It can contain daily, 10-day or monthly data. We are going to replace missing data with a default value, minus 999, such that the program can recognize it. The type of climatic data that can be important is air temperature data, minimum and maximum, rainfall data, and reference evapotranspiration data, or climatic data with which ET0 can be calculated, such as radiation data, air humidity, sunshine, and wind speed data. Aquacrop recognizes various climatic parameters and units in which the climatic data can be expressed. Here we see the parameters and units which are recognized by Aquacrop. To create a text file, we are going to select the numerical values in the spreadsheet. We copy them in a text file and we save that text file in the import directory of Aquacrop. In the next part, we are going now to import the climatic data from that text file in Aquacrop's database. So in our import directory, we have a text file with numerical values. Step number one consists in specifying what is the type of data, daily, 10 day or monthly, and what is the time range from what day to what day. If that is done correctly, then the time range should match with the number of rows. Subsequently, we specify for each of the column which is the climatic parameter and in what unit it is expressed. Aquacrop has assigned for each climatic parameter a data range. There is an upper limit and a lower limit. For example, for temperature data, the upper limit is by default 45 degrees and the lower limit minus 15 degrees. We can adjust the data range to the one which we expect in the climatic zone. And as such, we can run a range check. The text file might contain climatic data with which ET0 can be calculated. Now to determine ET0, Aquacrop will require the station characteristics, the altitude, latitude, and the location for estimating missing data. This will assign default values to the coefficients required to estimating missing humidity data, radiation data, and wind speed. Step 5 consists in importing climatic data in the database of Aquacrop. It consists in moving rain data from the text file to a file with extension PLU. Min and max temperature data is transferred to a TNX file and ET0 to an ET0 file. If climatic data was available with which ET0 can be calculated, it will be calculated by means of the built-in ET0 calculator. To import the climatic data, we need to specify where do we transferring the data to, by default it is the database of Aquacrop, and to specify the file names and description of the PLU, ET0 and TNX file. 
Finally, we have to create a climate file. In Aquacrop database, we have the imported PLU, ET0 and temperature files. There are also a set of CO2 files, which is yearly data, which are records of mean annual CO2 concentration. There are several CO2 files available in the database of Aquacrop. There is the Mona Loa CO2 file, which has long records of observed mean annual CO2 concentration and will be used for running simulation with historical climatic data. For crop yield estimates for future years, we have also various CO2 files with estimates from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Here we see the CO2 concentration which is stored in the Mauna Loa CO2 file. Today the CO2 concentration is about 400 parts per million. The Mauna Loa file contains observed mean annual CO2 concentration. For future years, it is assumed in that file that we have an increase of 2 parts per million per year, which is valid for the next 10 years. However, if we want to run estimates for future years, we better use one of the other CO2 files with various emission scenarios or representative concentration pathways. They differ because they are based on storylines which are different for assumptions for population, economic growth, and so on and so forth. So in Aquacrop database, we have imported PLU, ET0 and temperature file and a set of CO2 files. To create now a CLI file, which is actually an enveloping file, we have to select what is the blue file, ET0 file, temperature file, and accepted CO2 file. The climate file just contains the name of the rainfall file, ET0, air temperature, and CO2 file. In this spreadsheet, daily climatic data for a month for a number of climatic parameter is recorded. It is daily data for 13 years. We select first of all the numerical values. Subsequently, we paste it in a text file. And that text file is saved in the import directory of Aquacrop. Once we have imported the text file, with climatic data from Amman in the import directory, I am going now to transfer the data to the Aquacrop database. I select Climate to get access to the file management menu in which I select the top button to select or create a climate file. I can select an existing file but the amount file is not yet there because I have to import the climatic data. By clicking on the import button, I get access to the import climatic data in which I can find the list of text files which are stored in the import directory of Aquacrop. I select the file an aqua crop indicates that it consists of 4748 lines and that data is stored in six columns. Step number one, I'm going to specify the time range which is obtained by selecting the time range button of the tab sheet. It consists of daily data and the data runs from the 1st of January 2002 till the 31st of December 2014. 
Aquacrop recognizes that the number of daily records is now the same as the specified time range. In the next step, I'm going to identify the six climatic parameters. Therefore, I click here on code to specify the climatic parameter stored in column one. It consists of radiation data. So I select the sunshine radiation tab sheet and it is solar radiation expressed in megajoule per square meter per day. In the second column, I have temperature data. So I select the temperature tab sheet and it is the maximum temperature. The next column contains the minimum temperature. Column four has wind speed data. So I select the wind speed tab sheet. And this is wind speed, which is recorded at 10 meters above ground level. The wind speed is expressed in meters per second. Column number five has humidity data. I select humidity and it is the mean relative humidity. And column six has rainfall data. So I go to the rainfall tab sheet and I select rainfall in millimeters. There are for the moment no missing data. And here you can see that the default for recognizing missing value is put at minus 999. Here you see the data range of the climatic parameters for Amman. And below you see the program limits, the data range assigned by the program for each of those climate parameters. So we see some errors, for example, for the maximum temperature. Aquacrop believes that temperature above 45 degrees seems a little bit too high, although in Amman it is quite possible to have daily data with a maximum temperature higher than 45. So we are going to adjust this data range by making it 46 degrees. The same is true for wind speed. So the maximum upper limit for wind speed in aqua crop is only 8 meters per second, but this is wind speed which is measured at 10 meters high, so we can have up to 10 meters per second. Finally, very low relative humidity of 8.5 occurs in Amman, while aqua crop has a lower limit put only at 15 percentage. For mean relative humidity, I believe more in the data range assigned by Aquacrop. It is hard to believe that you can have a mean relative humidity as low as 8.5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the mean relative humidity from my list. I click again and I select none where I can say this is not considered, is a non-relevant parameter. Still, I have to update the data range because temperature above 45 degrees and wind speed measured at 10 meters, more than eight meters per second are quite possible. So I update my data range. And in this menu, the yellow cells are values which I can change. For temperature, the maximum temperature can be up to 46 degrees. The wind speed can be up to 10 meters per second. I save and close that and I can see that the errors in data range are gone. Since this file contains climatic parameters with which I can calculate ET node, I need to specify the station characteristics. 
This is done in the ET node tab sheet. First thing to do is to specify the name of the station, which is Amman. And it has an altitude of 779 meters above sea level. The latitude is 31 degrees and 57 minutes north. Here Aquacrop indicates what data is considered for air temperature, for air humidity, for radiation and for wind speed. Now we can see that air humidity is lacking. And he proposed to estimate it from the mean temperature. Therefore, I need to check the coefficient for the required estimate. If I click on it, I can see that for estimating vapor pressure is assuming that the dew point temperature is more or less the same as the minimum temperature. However, we are more in an arid, semi-arid, so you will subtract 2 degrees from the minimum temperature to get an estimate of the dew point temperature. With this estimate, Aquacrop is now going to calculate reference evapotranspiration. The final step, I import the climatic data. It consists in specifying the the name of the temperature file, the name of the ET node file, and the name of the rainfall data file. The description I can change as well, but I am happy with what Aquacrop has proposed. By clicking on the import climatic data, I can see which files are transferred to the database of Aquacrop. Now I return to the main menu and I am back here where I still need to create a climate file. Once again I click on climate, I get access to the file management menu in which I select the create climate file button. I don't need to import climatic data, this is already done, I just need to create a climate file. If I click on import create, I specify the name of the climate file, which is Amman, and a description. For example, daily data 2002-2014. Here I specify the name of the rainfall. I do that by selecting the file from the database. So I click on this button and I get access to all the rainfall files which are in Aquacrop database. And here we find the one of Amman. I double click it to select it. I do the same for the ET node file. I select the file from the ET node database. Here I find it, Amman ET node. I double click on it. The same for temperature. Here is my Amman temperature file. For CO2, Aquacrop has assigned the default Mauna Loa CO2 file, which is OK for me. So when I click now on Create, I have now created a climate file of Amman, which contains the climatic data for that station.